So welcome to another big video on this channel and on this one it's about the monopoly uh, from Berenger. So this is the faithful reproduction of the Korg monopoly. So this is an extensive and complete guide about this synthesizer. It's not a review, so it's gonna take some time. We're gonna talk about every single function, every single knob of this synthesizer so you can learn how to use it and make some good music, right? That's the whole point. Now, of course, if you like this, if you find this precious, please subscribe. It's free. And uh, if you don't want to subscribe, at least like the video. Again, it's just free and it really helps a lot. Okay, so let's just begin with the oscillators. I'm going to go to the first oscillator, the oscillator number one, and I'm going to put the level all the way at the top. And right here is where you control the level. So we can, you know, remove the obvious parts uh, fast from the beginning, beginning so we can go to the more hardcore kind of a thing. So each oscillator, all the oscillators are pretty much the same and you get four. Now on all the oscillators, you can do the same waveforms. You can go through the same octaves, same levels, but the only difference is that the oscillator number one has no tune and the other three, you have a tune. We're going to talk about this in a second. So first I'm going to go to the oscillator number one and you get pretty much four different waveforms. You get a triangle, right? Just a triangle. Then you get a saw. And then you get something which is a little bit, I wouldn't say weird, it's just normal. It's just the way it is right here. You get something that says PWM and then PW. So this is pulse width modulation and the other one is pulse width. And this is important when we reach the modulation section. So the pulse width modulation, uh, the PWM, is just a square. So if I do something, notice that we get a square. Now the difference between this one and the other one is that with this one, with PWM, we can modulate it. Uh, we can modulate the width of the square. And we're going to talk about that later. We can modulate it with the LFO, but first we need to reach to the LFO section. But if you're not doing any modulation, it's just a square. Then the other one is going to be the PW. So this one is still a square, but it's going to be a narrow uh, square. If as soon as I, you know, press something, I get nothing. Why do I get nothing? So the PW, it's a square, it's a pulse that can be, uh, you know, the width can be controlled, but it needs to be controlled manually. And the control, it's right here, which says width and PW. If it's all the way down, you're just not going to get anything because the waveform, it's so narrow that you're not going to get anything. So if I go up, notice that we get something. Let me just go in steps. Notice that it's super narrow. We are going to get something less narrow. And then we get more something. When we reach five, we get something pretty similar to what we get on PWM. Actually, it's pretty much the same. And if you go the other way, it's the same thing than going right here. We are just making the waveform narrow, but notice how the polarity changes. Again, the trick is, and the difference is that with the PW, you can use a, you can use a square, but you can, you're going to need to control the width manually. And that never changes unless you manually change it. And the other one can be modulated with an LFO. It's like, you know, uh, you're going to be automatically doing something, something like that. Of course, you can use the four oscillators at the same time. I'm going to go bring the level, go all the way up and notice that I'm using unison mode. We're going to talk about the modes in a few minutes. Uh, all the oscillators are on and notice that they are all on the same position. We can, we can play the four oscillators at the same exact time. Now, the oscillator two, three and four, they can, uh, you know, they have a tune control for now. I'm just going to level down and go to the oscillator number two, just to the two. And if I do something, we get just a saw, but we can detune this one. Now, of course, you might thinking, maybe I can detune it like 12 semitones up or maybe 12, 12 down. No, you cannot do it. You, but the only thing you can do is you can make it sharp or you can make it flat. That's it, that's the only thing you can do. Sharp or flat. And the same thing applies to the other ones. So if we put them all in, you know, we go up on the level of uh, all the oscillators, they're going to be all playing at the same time. Since they're all pretty much on the same spot right here, you're going to get kind of a hard sync, a facey sound. 
And it's because all the waveforms are the same, you're playing on the same spot, and the tune, the they're tuned pretty much the same. Now the magic happens when you start detuning some of them. Let me just go lower right here. What is that? We get a we get just a bigger sound. So one of the coolest things about the Monopoly is that you can, uh, you know, change the oscillators, right? You can change the range, you can change the volumes, and you can change the uh, the waveform, and this will give you different timbres, it will give you different sounds. So if I do something like that, maybe what I want to do on this one, I just want to maybe play one octave higher, the other one is gonna be like super low, and the other one is gonna be maybe a different waveform, we're gonna do PWM. And maybe this one, I'm gonna go maybe higher, and this one I'm gonna manually adjust the width to make it, you know, super narrow. Right, so you can combine the different waveforms and octaves and, you know, everything else just to get a much richer sound. So I'm gonna go back to all the oscillators, I'm gonna play them on eight, and I'm gonna do a saw for the for all. And I'm gonna just pretty pretty much I'm doing the same thing on all oscillators. So what you get as well, of course, is a master tune. This is what we'll do will make it sharp, or it will make it flat, but it will do it to all the oscillators. So if you think about this, it, is like uh, this control we have right here, but you know a global control for everything. Then you have a detune, and you maybe you're thinking, why do we get a detune? We can do it right here, just detune the oscillators. Well, that's the whole point. You can go right here. You can go right there and just detune with a single knob. Now you don't need to manually just start detuning everything. You just do it with the detune. That's the whole point. You can still go and do detune it further, you know, a little bit more. And the effect is just gonna be a big a bit more, but you know, it's completely up to you. It depends on what or which sound you want. But again, this is the detune. If you go really crazy, it's just it's gonna really detune it. Okay, so then the next thing is the portamento, really pretty basic control. This is the glide control. So you're gonna press a key and it's gonna slide to that key. I press a different key and it will just slide to that one. And so on and on. Right, so pretty simple, pretty standard control in pretty much every uh, single, single, single synthesizer. So I shifted the camera just a little bit to focus on this area. So uh, with any subtractive synthesizer, which is what this is, you get your cut of, you know, your, your filter. You get your cut of your resonance and your keyboard tracking and you get the intensity, which is how we modulate the cut of. Now, again, this is a very standard synthesizer. This gets your, gives you your cut of. And for now, just, you know what? I'm gonna go just one to one single oscillator. Now I'm gonna use a saw, right? Just a saw, and I'm gonna put it on eight. This, I press something, and notice that we are getting a pretty loud, loud sound, so the cutoff is gonna cut the higher frequencies. Just like that, you know, we're just cutting the higher frequencies. It's a 24 dB per octave, which is very classic for this kind of synthesizer, right? Pretty simple. So then what you get is the resonance, which is the peak at the break point. So if I boost this, notice that there is a peak growing right there on the on the spectrum. And this is a very resonant filter, so, or uh, uh, resonant, it's very resonant. So if you boost it, notice that it goes right there and we get that tone. You can even turn off your oscillators, go all the way down. And what you're gonna get is a sine wave. Now, of course, we're gonna be able to control the sine wave with a cutoff. Again, at this point, pretty standard, something that you get on most analog subtractive synthesizers. Let me just go back to the one oscillator. So you get your cutoff and you get your resonance control. Let me just maybe go there. 
right, pretty simple. So then you get your keyboard tracking. Now, if you don't know what keyboard tracking is, is a way we get uh, to hear pretty much everything we play on the on the keyboard. If I play a low key, now let me just give you an example. I'm gonna do a lot of cutting, right? I'm just gonna cut. And I'm gonna play a lower key. So if I play a lower key, we can hear it. If I go up and I keep going up, we can hear it, you know? But as soon as we go higher on the keys, and I'm gonna go one octave up so we can, you know, hear this a bit better. But is that the higher keys, we can barely hear them, hear them. And it makes sense, right? We are cutting a lot of frequencies. We are cutting the high, the high frequencies. And if I go really high, it's just pretty much, you know, we get nothing. So what the uh, keyboard controlled keyboard tracking is gonna, will do, it will create kind of a envelope, some, something like that. And now the higher keys will get a bit more cut off. The cut off is just gonna be a bit more opened. And whenever we play lower keys, since the envelope is like that, the lower keys are just gonna be, uh, you know, on the same position where we have the cutoff. They're not gonna be a boosting. They're not gonna get boost. So if on the keyboard tracking, I go all the way, I'm gonna be playing uh, on the up, which is, you know, the higher keys. Notice that now we can hear them and before we couldn't. So the keyboard tracking is adjusting the cutoff so we can hear all the keys regardless of which keys we are playing, if you're playing low or high keys. But this this is important and uh, depends on what you want to do. It depends on what you which sound you're getting. Sometimes you just you're not going to play high keys, so you don't need the keyboard tracking. Or maybe you can use something in between. Notice if I go there, it's super bright, and if I go here, it's less bright. Okay, so then you get your EG intensity. So this is the control that will be used uh, to modulate the cutoff. Okay, so I'll just give you an example. So what I want to do, I'm going to bring a little bit of resonance. I want to just play a key. I'm going to put it in normal for now. I'm going to play a key. And what I want to do is that every time we play a key, I want to do something like that with the cutoff, right? We want to do apply some modulation, right? Pretty simple. So we do it with the EG intensity and the envelopes that we have right here. And I'm going to assume that you uh, already know what an envelope is and you know a little bit. So we have the attack, the decay, sustain, and release. And this is the amount of the modulation that we are going to do. And notice that you have a negative and a positive value. We're going to talk about the negative, but for now, we're going to do it positive. I want to move it up and then move it down. That's what I want to do. So the attack is a time-based control. It's going to mean it's going to decide how much time it will take to go up. Notice it goes up. And if I make it really slow, it's going to be super slow. Right? Now, if I press and hold again, just like I am doing right now, let me just show you there. I'm pressing, holding this key. I press and hold. At one time, it's going to just go back to the beginning. So what it's doing, it's going all the way to right here, very slowly, and then boop, going very quickly right there at that position. So we don't want that. We want a smooth going down. So that's going to be the decay stage. So if I bring the decay up and let me make it a little bit faster. It's going to go slow up and it's going to take some time to go back to the original position. And that's going to be the decay. How much time it's going to take to go back. Of course, we can make this really short. If I go and do it like that, it's going to be very short. Right? So then you have the sustain, and this is a time-based, these are time-based controls, and then you have the sustain. Now the sustain, would, what pretty much will do is the level control. So right now we are going up, and then we go down, right? We know that. So the sustain will kind of uh, make the going down of the decay stay in some point uh, in between. Notice it's not going down, it's staying up there, and if I go maybe here, which is going to be a bit more easy to hear, it's not going down all the way. So the sustain will, you know, kind of uh, say decay, you know, don't go all the way back. Stay right there. Now, if you go full sustain, you're disabling the decay stage. So there is no decay. It's just going to stay up there the whole time, right? Again, all of this are just standard controls. And I'm doing a little bit of explanation because maybe you're starting. And... Uh, 
yeah, you're, you're starting, so this is useful for you. So I'm gonna go no, no sustain for now, and then we have the release stage. So maybe I'm gonna do a little bit of stain. So if I uh, press something, as soon as I release the key, notice that the sound dies. So the release, what it will do, it will smooth the sound, it will kind of fade the sound out. Now on the amp envelope, which is this one, we don't have any release. I'm gonna add some release so we can hear the effect. So the release will just, you know, make a smooth transition. If I release the keys, now it's just much smooth, smoother. Right? Right, so pretty simple. These are just standard controls. Now, of course, uh, this is how we can modulate the cut of frequency. Now we can do it negatively which means that it may be instead of starting right here and going up and then going down on the cutoff, we can do it the opposite way. We can start right here, go down, and then go back up again. So for now, I'm just gonna maybe put it right here and I'm gonna go right there. Notice the difference? So we are doing the same thing we were doing before. Of course, I need to go there. We are doing the same thing, but we are doing it kind of a, you know, inverted. We are inverting the movement. We start high, then we go down, and then we go back up. So the BCA EG will control how the volume goes out of the synthesizer, and the envelope works the exact way than the VCFEG. The attack is going to control how smooth the sound will just, you know, rise, how smooth will go down if we want to sustain it at some point and what's going to happen when I release the keys. For now, I'm just not going to add a release. So if I play something, notice that the sound goes, fades in. And if I, you know, make it more obvious, the sound fades in. And for now, I'm just going to disable the sustain. And notice that, of course, at some point, the sound needs to go out. And that's the decay. It's going to start decaying and, you know, the sound goes out. Now, what happens if I want to, uh, for the sound not to disappear? I can bring a little bit of sustain. It's going to go up. It's going to go down just a little bit. And remember, it's very slow. But it's going to stay somewhere in between. And we can actually control this or go up or go down while we are holding a key. And the release is going to be what's going to happen, you know, how we are going to be fading the sound out uh, uh, when we just release a key. So I'm going to be pressing a key. And as soon as I release it, the sound fades. Before the sound dies right away. Right? That's the difference. Okay, so I'm going to put everything down to sustain all the way up. No modulation. We have a noise generator. And we can turn off all the oscillators and we're just going to still get the noise. And it's just white noise. Of course, you can go really high up, uh, up on the value. And it gets really, really loud. So then you have this mode, which is the trigger mode. And this is something important that works with the envelopes that we have right here. Then we have the auto damp. Uh, we're going to talk about that, you know, in a few seconds. For now, I'm just going to, you know, kind of maybe keep it off. Uh, so you have two triggers. You have the single and you have the multiple. But this is what it does. Um, it's really useful when you are playing and holding a key. Let me just give you an example. I'm going to go right there. Just going to bring a little bit of the intensity. I'm just going to do something like that so we can kind of a really kind of a hear what is going on right here. Of course, I need a, an oscillator. Right. So that's the sound, right? And we can really see and hear that modulation with the EG intensity. Right. So what's going to happen if I just press and hold? I'm just holding a key and I press a different key. Right? And notice I'm holding this one. Hopefully, you know, maybe the camera should be shifted down, but you know. I'm pressing and holding. I press other keys. And we can see that the, the something is happening. We can hear that it's playing the notes, but we don't hear them like this, right? But if I start doing... 
something like that without holding a key, we can hear that modulation. So the trigger, when you're in single, it means that if you are holding a key and you press other keys, it will not use or trigger the envelope. That's why it's called trigger. Now multiple, it means that it doesn't care if you're pressing, pressing, holding a key. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna play one key, press and hold, and now if I play other keys, the tr the envelope will be triggered regardless. That's the difference between you know the single and the multiple mode. Okay, so now we know how the oscillators work, how the filter and everything works, and as I'm explaining everything on a very smooth and slow way, so everyone can understand how this works. You know, you might have a beginner level level, and you'll you'll you're still able to understand it. That's the whole point. If of course you're an advanced user, you can go faster, or maybe you can switch between chapter chapters. I'm recording this video to uh, for all audiences. Okay, so now we know how everything, all of this just works. Now we're gonna talk about this mode. So what we've been using is the unison mode, which is the mono mode, right? You just play one key at the same time. You cannot, you cannot make a chord. It just, you know, will not work. It's a mono mode. Now the unison will play the four oscillators at the same time when you play a key. And notice that, of course, the light goes on. When it's receiving, when it, one of the oscillators, uh, when the oscillators are receiving notes or incoming signal from the keyboard. Now, then you have the poly mode. So we need, we're going to need to talk about this one. So real polyphony means that you can play many keys at the same time, like, you know, making a chord. And with this one, we can, right? I'm just making a C minor. And it does it. Now, the thing is that there's a difference between this uh, type of thing that we are getting right here and uh, real polyphony. Uh, for example, the Deep Man Mind 12, which is another, you know, synth from Bringer, it has 12 voices. It means that with one single oscillator, if we just press one key, uh, we will play 12 different voices. So we have like 12 oscillators playing on the same spot. That is a different type of polyphony and that, that is called voices. Is a different thing. On this thing, we don't have voices. We play four oscillators at the same time if we make a chord. But, you know, we don't have voices. It's just one voice uh, per oscillator. Now, of course, what this does, if I play one key, that key will be assigned to the first oscillator. If I play a second key, that one will be assigned to the second oscillator. If I play a third key, that one will be going to the third one. And if I play the fourth, that one is going to go to the number four. So that's how polyphony or poly works on this synthesizer. It will assign whatever key you're adding, you know, you're stacking to this stack of the different, you know, to the, diff to the available uh, VCO. So what happens if you play four, uh, if you play five notes, right? Because this has four oscillators, so you can, uh, you know, play a chord with four different notes. So we're gonna go and do something like that, all right? If I play a fourth note, we know we can get it. Now I'm gonna go and play this one right here. So notice what happens. If I release that one, the lower key, the sound doesn't change. So what it means is that if you're playing four different notes and you add a fifth one, that one is going to replace the first oscillator. So it goes in order. If you're playing one, two, three, and four, and you add a fifth, the fifth will go to the first oscillator. You need to be aware of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do the single. I'm gonna put it in single, and we're gonna talk about the auto damp uh, in a second. So of course, this mean that this doesn't mean that if you're in poly, you cannot you know, uh, play an arpeggio or do something like that. You can still, maybe I'm gonna hold one single note that will always go to the oscillator number one, that's the lower one. And then at the top, I can do things like that. Right, you can still do that. Now, if you can do, you can play two, that one is gonna go to the one and two, and you can again do something at the top, you know, what, whatever. Now notice that while I'm holding this and I play new keys, 
the note it's sustaining. And why is that, you know? Notice, I play it once, it sustains, and I'm not, I'm not holding anything. And this is because the, uh, of the auto damp. So this works on uh, better in poly mode. Now, if I turn it on, it means that if I'm still holding a key and I play a new one, that one will die. Notice that now it's not holding it. If I turn it on, it's, got, it's going to hold the notes for me. Right? So that's the difference with, difference with the auto damp. So, okay, so the other mode, it's going to be the unison share. And this is just a bit special. I'm going to go there and it's uh, notice that this is on the poly category, right? They are just kind of a siblings. So this is, it works pretty much the same way, but now the synthesizer will kind of uh, assign uh, the keys for you. So I'm going to just press one single key. Notice what happens. Just one single key. And it's doing the same thing that unison, right? Just doing the same thing than unison. There's no difference. Now, the thing is that what we can do right now, I can play two notes. For example, let's do something like that. I'm playing two notes and it's kind of a doing it, right? It's not doing the same than unison. We can hear the other note. So what it does is that if you're playing one single key, one will use the four. But if you're using two keys, it will divide and use the one and two for one of the keys and the three and the four for the second key. Right? Makes sense. That is what, you know, why it's called unison and then share, because it's kind of a sharing the VCOs. Now, the thing is that if you press three, of course, there's no way for the synthesizer to do, you know, a, a different subdivision, because we don't have six, uh, six VCOs, we only have four. So now it will just work like a poly mode. Just the same thing. It's gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing with four. So this works best when you are using two. When you use three is the same thing than using poly. Now what's the benefit of this? Well, if you're using two, again, you can change whatever it is that you do right here. And notice that I played right, <laughs> let me just show you. I'm gonna go play right there. Play this one. And now this, it's gonna be this. So it's kind of a switching them. So you need to be careful in what you do. So I'm gonna be playing both at the same time. So now the lower note is gonna be sustained right here and it's not gonna change. The only one that changes is the one I'm playing at the top. Now, let me just do the same ones. Let me do something like that. I'm gonna release it. I'm gonna play a C and then another C. At the same time, I'm gonna release the higher one and it's the first and the second one. Right? Okay, so let me go back to poly. So I'm gonna make a C minor, right? So that's a chord. You're gonna make a C minor. Now what I want to do, I want to be able to play that C minor chord, but with one single key. So that's what the chord memory is going to do. And notice the chord memory, it's on the mono. So it means we can play one single key at a time. So if I make a chord and then select the chord memory, that chord is going to be stored in the memory of the chord memory. So now when I play one key, it's playing that chord. And notice that the three lights are just lighting because it's remembering the chord, the C triad. All right, so that's the way it works. Another way of, of uh, doing this, you can still go to poly or maybe just hold it and this will hold the chord. You can just play one single chord and this is gonna hold it for you and then just go to chord memory and then, you know, that's it, it's gonna be stored. You can of course make, uh, you can store four uh, different keys because you can do four oscillators.
So if you're going to unison back to unison and you still hold it, the hold again is going to hold whatever key that you're pressing. So. It's going to hold the key for you, right? Pretty simple. So again, just a pretty standard control. Now, remember that the key assigned modes, they work differently and everything is going to work in a, in a bit uh, different way whenever you use the modulation or whatever else, or maybe you change the oscillators because it works in a different way. So if I go to poly, now the hold is going to be holding the keys because we can play many keys. So if I play this one, it's holding the oscillator number one. If I go to this one, it's holding the two and the one now. If I do one more, it's holding the one, two, three, and so on, and on, and on, and on, and on. Right? So of course you need to be careful in what you want, you want to do and which mode you are using. So then we have the transpose, and the transpose is just, just a transpose control. And here is one of the main differences with the cork uh, monopoly. With the cork, if you play a chord, uh, play a note and you sustain it, when you change, you flip the switch, it's going to go down one octave. So this is, you know, it's gonna transpose it down. So you don't need to release the key in order to transpose it. On this synthesizer, you, you kind of need to release the key and play it again. If I change it up, it's not going to change. And then when I release and I play it again, we are going to get it. So th that's one of the differences you get with the with the cork monopoly. Okay, so now we need to talk about the arpeggiator. So the action kind of a shifted over here. I'm using four oscillators and I'm doing pretty much nothing on the on the uh, on right here on the envelopes. I'm just doing a little bit of uh, cut of uh, cutting the hikes, uh, just a little bit. That's that's it. And I'm using unison, of course. Now, the arpeggiator, of course, it's very basic, but the, synth, the, the, the thing is that the uh, synth, it's so special with the oscillators and the different modes and the filters that we can get really cool sounds with just a basic arpeggiator. So right now we are in unison mode. I'm going to go and just turn the arpeggiator on. Just going to turn it on. As soon as I press something, we're going to start getting that, you know, that gate. So since we are in unison mode, all the oscillators will play at the same time. Right? Pretty simple. So what is controlling the speed? By default, the arpeggiator is connected to the MG2. And of course, we're going to talk about all of this in a minute. So this is a, a, a modulation generator and it's the number two. So the only thing we can do on this one is control how fast it goes and notice that we get the light right there or how slow it goes. So if I want something slow, it's going to go super slow. And if we want something fast, it's going to go faster. Now, I'm telling you that, uh, that's why I'm, I'm told you that one of the cool things about this synthesizer is that how it works that we can, for example, do something like that, change this, go, this is one is going to go to low, this one right there, and just, you know, kind of, a, you know, doing this randomly. And now, which is one, we're going to get that effect, which is really cool, right? Just flipping, just changing some of the configurations and we get a really cool sound. Let me just go back to the, you know, the default sound. Okay, so now we know that we can do this, but right now the thing is that we are in unison mode. What happens if we go to poly mode? Because right now we can play, play one single key at a time. So if I go to poly mode, now what we can do, we can make a chord and the arpeggiator is going to go and do it, right? But notice how it works. It goes and it's gonna, and let me just go slower so we can really hear and uh, see what it's doing. What it's gonna, on the poly mode, the arpeggiator will toggle through all the different oscillators, right? It's just toggling on each single key I'm pressing and it's just pressing and it's just playing an oscillator. Pretty simple, it's what it can do. 
Now notice I'm pressing and holding. If I release it, the sound stops. So the next mode is gonna be latch. So I'm gonna play it one chord and it's gonna hold it for me. So the hold, since we are using the arpeggiator, it will not work because we are, you know, we have the latch mode. Now on this one, what we can do, let me just go something like that. I'm gonna go adjust it like that. We can get cool sounds like that, right? It's just a very classic sound. So what is the one of the cool things about this? Again, we can change this. And we can start getting, you know, just different sounds. And if we go faster... <laughs> right? Okay, so let me go back to all saws and the same octave right here at same control. So uh, if I go to on, you have different modes right here. Right now, we are doing what we are doing is going up and down. So one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. Pretty simple. So you have the down mode, which is going to be the same thing, but it's going to go down. And the other one is the same, but it's going to go up. It's gonna go down and then up. Now then you have the octave, which is mean it means that right now if you play on this octave, it's just gonna do this three chords in this case, and if you're making a triad. Now if I do two octaves, it means that it will do this one and the next one. So if I play a C chord, then it's gonna do this C chord, right? It's gonna do this one. It's going two octaves higher. And then what you get is the full, and for this one, I'm going to go maybe not to up, I'm going to go to normal. If we make a C chord, notice that it's going several ranges up. It's playing the same triad, but it's doing it, you know, it's going up an octave multiple times. And this, of course, depends on what you want to do. Is play, if you play one single key, it's just going to do that, which is crazy. Alright, so that, that, that is the arpeggiator. Okay, so now we need to talk about modulation. We're going to start to talking about the modulation. Now, of course, on the BSTs like plugins or maybe uh, uh, the DeepMind 12 or even the Hydrosynth, you have a lot of LFOs, you have a lot of envelopes. You can pretty much modulate whatever, whatever it is that you want. On this one, you cannot. You know, it's a vintage synthesizer. You just have very limited options and very, very limited, you know, modulation uh, sources and, you know, places where you can modulate. Uh, but it's just the way it is. And it's just, you know, kind of a part of the magic. So, okay. So now notice again, the action shifted to this section. And uh, the, it's because the main modulation, it's going to come from the envelopes, this one right here. And we already talked about this when we modulate the cutoff, you know? And the other modulation uh, sources is going to be the MG2 and the MG1. And what they are, they are just LFOs. Pretty simple. We already know that the MG2 can control the speed of the arpeggiator. Now, the MG2 is just, again, an LFO and is a triangle LFO. And you cannot change that. There is no way of changing what type of waveform you have on that LFO. It's just kind of a built in. You cannot change it. Now, the MG1, a difference of the MG1, you can change uh, the waveform. This one is the speed of the MG1, and this is the type of waveform that you're going to be using for that LFO. Now, of course, we're going to be using this in a minute. So first, we need to cover the different things we need to do. We already know we can modulate the cutoff with the intensity and the envelope. But we can also, and I'm going to use the oscillator number one, and I'm going to switch to the PWM, which is the pulse width modulation. So that is the kind of a, the second uh, thing we can do in terms of modulation. The first one is just modulating the cutoff, right? So the second thing is modulating the pulse width. If I do, maybe I'm gonna just bring this and just lower the volume just a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna go down so we can see. Okay, so we have a square, right? We know. 
We know if we go to PW, we can manually modulate the, the width of the waveform. Now, on this one, right here where it says PWM, this is the kind of a, the first most basic modulation uh, option that we get on the synth. So when we go to PWM, the intensity is going to start modulating the width of the square. Pretty simple, it's just pulse width modulation, something very common. But notice that, be, you know, just right here, we have different options. It's asking you, what do you want to use to do this modulation? You want to use the MG2, the MG1, or the BCEG, BCFEG. So the MG2, remember, this is a triangle, and the only thing that you can do is just change the speed. So if I press something, notice how it's moving. It's up and down. It's just very smooth. Right? And it's because it's a triangle, and it's the only thing we can use. But if we go to MG1, we can do more things, and I'm gonna go slower. So we can still do that triangle, which is the same triangle. But if I go to the next one, now we can do a saw. And notice how it moves, it just goes right there and just goes like this. Then we have the inverted, which is actually a saw, but it's the other way. It's the ramp down and the ramp up. So now the motion is different. We are just starting slow, goes up, and then abruptly starts over again. And then we have the square, which is going to be the on and off kind of a thing. Notice it's going all the way up and all the way down at the same time. Not at the same time, but you know, you get the you get the point. So this is the the second way of modulating uh, of modulation we get on the synthesizer. First is this one. This is the second one, the pulse width modulation. Now notice, of course, if you change the intensity, this is gonna be, and I'm gonna go maybe to something a bit more easy to hear. Notice the intensity. What it will do. It will make it more aggressive. Now the uh, pulse, it's super narrow. It's going from, you know, normal from here to super narrow and all the in-betweens. So at the end of the day, again, it's up to you if you want to use the MG2 or maybe you want to do the MG1 or maybe you are already using the MG1 for something else, which we can, we discuss, we will discuss it. And you just want to use the MG2 uh, for something else like the pulse width modulation. Now you can also use the BCF uh, envelope. Like we are doing right here with the cutoff where we just, you know, move it with the envelopes. You can move it with the, the envelopes. So if I go all the way up right here, notice that the envelopes are just all the way down. So we are not doing anything and I'm not doing EG intensity. So I'm not modulating the cutoff, right? So I'm gonna say that I'm gonna start slow and I'm gonna decay slow. Now, if I press it, notice how it moves. Now, this is a one shot kind of a modulation. You press it once, it's going to execute once, and then it's gonna go back to its uh, kind of an original position. If you add sustain, of course, it's gonna stay somewhere in between, and this works the same way with the cutoff, right? It's gonna go up, and then slowly down, and then sustain at one point. And if we add some release, it's just gonna, again, do the same thing. Re release, and it just dies because we have no release. Let me just release the key before the cycle ends. I'm gonna do intensity, uh, much more intensity. Notice if I release the keys, it's still kind of, a, you know, expanding it because it's still modulating it. But this is how it works. So you have, you know, your three main uh, kind of uh, sources, the MG1, MG2, or you can use the envelope. And this is with the pulse with modulation. Now, the other modulation source is not this one. Now, all of this works around the MG2 and the MG1. Now, the next modulation source is going to be this control. Notice it says MG1. And it's because this controls, uh, you know, some of the things you have right here. And they are just a little bit confusing. The first one, I'm going to talk about the one that says MG1, this one. Notice it says, okay, so the MG1 can control the BCF, the pitch, and the VCO dash slave VCO. And the confusing thing right now is the VCO one dash slave VCO. We are gonna talk about this. 
Uh, the VCO one is pretty simple. You're gonna see what it does in a minute. And the slave, you're gonna understand that when we reach this section right here. For now, it's just not relevant. So what this will do, it will use the, what this uh, control will do, it will use the MG1 to apply some modulation to the cutoff, to the pitch, or to the BC BC01 pitch. Okay, so let me just go right here and put the cutoff maybe around there and do some resonance. If there's no modulation, we are gonna get something like that. Let me just get something a bit more useful. So maybe I'm gonna, yeah, you're not using that. There, it's now something not, in, not too bright. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to do an LFO just like we would do with this one. But remember, this is a one-shot action. What I want to do is... I want to do something like this. So we want to use the MG1 to do it. And right now, the MG1, it says, okay, we want to use the BCF. So I'm gonna play a note. And as soon as I go up, nothing happens. And it's because it has an intensity, just like the pulse width modulation. So if I go up and bring more intensity, this now it's using the mg1 at this speed with this intensity and it's modulating the bcf the cutoff right pretty easy if you put it that way now of course we can use other types of uh the waveforms right I'm gonna go to this one because it's easy to hear. You can go really fast. Right? It's pretty simple. Now, of course, this uh, the, the mod wheel, if you go down, you will, of course, decrease the intensity. You will decrease the intensity. So the next option, uh, besides the BCF, is going to be the pitch. If I go to this one right here, this one, what it will do, it will uh, uh, modulate uh, with the same modulation, the pitch of the oscillator. So if I do something like that, notice this, moving it up and down. And this is what we will call vibrato. Let me, let me add a bit more brightness. And we're, we are just using the oscillator number one. If I bring the other ones, it's going to modulate the pitch of all the oscillators. That's why it says pitch. It's modulating the pitch of all of them. And if you think about this, it's kind of a, you know, uh, something that you can use is if you go all the way down and you're just playing. You know, you can use it as, as a vibrato control. That's, you know, the main purpose. But again, if you go all the way down, you're just gonna get full modulation. Right. So the second option, it means pitch, uh, pitch, and it's modulating the pitch of all the oscillators at once. The next option, it's going to be VCO1. So the only one that's going to get that modulation is the VCO1. And I can actually prove this. If I do this, notice it sounds super weird. If I go to the VCO number one and turn the volume down, notice that there's no pitch modulation. There's no modulation at all. And it's because the only mod the only one receiving pitch modulation is going to be the oscillator number one. If I turn everything down, just like this, go down. No, the one is just getting that modulation. Now this is gonna be super useful when we get to this situation right here, when we get to the effects section, but we, we are not there yet. So. On the other one, on the bend, you get exactly the same thing. You can modulate the BCF, you can modulate the pitch, or the VCO1 pitch. But of course, instead of using uh, the MG1, the, uh, the, you know, the LFO1, you're just gonna do it with the bend, right? Just like that. And this one has an intensity as well. Right now on the BCF, it's just a bend wheel, right? Notice that the bend wheel always go, but goes back to the original position when we release it. Maybe you want to do the pitch. Or maybe you just want to do the number one. Just, you know, gonna enable the other ones. 
and you're gonna get some very special sounds, of course. And the intensity matters right here. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room, which is going to be the effects. So this is not a reverb, this is not delay, this is not all that. This is a different type. This is modulation, frequency modulation. And uh, you, uh, you know, you get two types. You get the cross mod, which is this one, if you go all the way down, or you get the sync, or you get a combination of both. Now, this works in a very uh, peculiar, uh, peculiar way, particular way. And uh, I'm going to tell you how this works. So first, I'm using one oscillator and I'm doing a little bit of cutoff. That's all. With the saw. So the first uh, the first one that you get, the first kind of a, you know, let's say modulation or effect, uh, is the sync. Now, this is one of the most basic uh, effects that you can get on a synthesizer. It's, it's just pretty... Uh, um, you know, pretty common. So sync, what it means, and if you want just super technical information about this, how this works, go to the web. You're going to find it. You're going to find even the math for this. Okay, so sync, what it does, pretty much, uh, it will sync the uh, an oscillator to the other oscillator. So remember, we have a slave right there. Well, now it's, you know, we are entering into that territory. So, for example, if we have oscillator number one playing at one frequency, it's, you know, it's doing something. So the sync, it means that the other oscillators will be kind of a synced to the first one, right? The cycle is going to be restarted to be in sync with the first oscillator. So now the first oscillator is going to be the master one and the other ones are going to be the slaves. But this is what it means. So sync is going to give us this effect. So right now, of course... Since the one is the master, we are not going to get any, any difference when we enable this. Because remember, the first one is the master. It doesn't change. It's not going to change anything. Now, if we bring the other ones, and I'm doing the same thing on all the other oscillators, we are going to hear something change. If I turn this off, notice it sounds a bit phasey, and now it sounds a little bit different. So again, now all the oscillators are being in, uh, being synced to the first one. Now, when you use this effect, when you you know they are synced to the other one, you don't get a super great effect. You just kind of a uh, hear the sound a little bit louder. Now, here the magic happens when you start modulating the uh, slave uh, oscillators. So, for example, you have the frequency mod. So this one will affect the oscillators. And actually, actually, we can do it manually. If I just press and hold, and I start modulating this, notice that we start getting different timbers. And even if I change the range, we're going to start getting different things. Now, notice how, how crazy I am detuning this. I'm just detuning everything. But still, when I press a C, it sounds like a C, you know, it sounds like the, the keys I'm playing. And it's because, remember, the frequency of these ones are being in sync, are being synced to the oscillator number one, which is, you know, in tune. So you don't get something out of tune. If I turn this off, we get... We get everything, you know, detuned. So that's, that's, that's the trick. It's syncing the other ones to the master one. Now here the magic happens when all the frequency of this ones and you know the vibe of the of the slaves starts to change. And you're gonna get you know different sounds. For now, I'm just gonna put everything in tune so I can you know show you this. Okay, so now all of them are all all these slaves and the master are on the same place. So we only get kind of a you know a louder sound, just a bigger sound, louder, not bigger. So how can we, you know, make it uh, a bit better? Because this is not a very, you know, nice sound. So we have the freak, the, the frequency mod. So this one, what it will do, will go to the slaves ones, uh, to the slave ones, and it will start doing frequency modulation. How? Using the MG1, which is again this one. Remember, we talked about that one. Or it will use the uh, the envelope of the uh, of the filter of the uh, of the yeah of the filter. Right? So that's what it means. So as soon as I go to MG1 and I just press something and start bringing this. Now 
Notice how crazy it gets. It is because it's modulating the frequency of the slaves. Not that one. And you can again get really great sounds out of this. If you do just a little bit, just a little bit is gonna sound really cool. If I turn it off, you know, very different. Right? So that is what we do with the sync in this case. And this is how the frequency modulation is going to help you to get, you know, something else out of the sync. Because if it's all the way off, it's just, you know, <laughs> it doesn't sound that good. So, okay, so I'm going to go back and do a little bit. And remember that changing the slave ones will give you different timbres as well. Now you need to do some playing around here. Let's change the frequency. Remember, we are doing MG1, so even we can change uh, right here the waveform. So, okay, I'm gonna go all the way back, you know, back to the same sound we have that we had before, which is, you know, the not very special sound, right? Without the frequency mod. And the other modulation we get, it's not the MG1, is the BCFG. So we can use the envelope to do the frequency modulation for us. Because the MG1, you cannot argue, since this is an LFO, is gonna be that con is gonna do that constant movement. And it just maybe a little bit too much, right? It's just a bit too much. Okay. So instead of doing that, we can use the BCF and this will control the intensity as well. And I'm going to do something like that and something like that. So we're going to go and do slow, maybe slow-ish up and slow-ish down. So notice that movement. If you see the, the vector scope, the oscilloscope, notice it starts, you know, creates this out of sync and then it goes back to the original sound. Alright, so super cool. Right? So of course you need to adjust the, the values to, to get something you like. Right? So, yeah, that's, that's what we need to do. So remember that the trigger right now will still, you know, play a part if you're playing um, kind of a multi multiple keys. Okay, so now we know how sync works. Now we know what we can do with the frequency modulation, how this works, how this works. And we need to talk about the other ones, but first I need to cover the single and the double. So right now, uh, the first one, the, uh, the first oscillator is the mass one. And let me just do something like that so we can, you know, we can get something a bit more, you know, uh, crazy. We can hear the difference. So right now, the oscillator number one is the master, right? So if I play something, that one gets nothing. The second one is going to get the modulation, the third one gets the modulation, and the fourth one gets the modulation. We know that. Slaves, master. Now, double, it means that now the first one is master, the second one is the slave of one, and the third one is a different master, and the, and the fourth one is a slave of the third. <laughs> so if I play something, the first one gets nothing, the second one gets the sync of this one. The third one gets nothing because, again, this is now a master. And the fourth one is a slave of the third. So if I do something less aggressive, something like that, I can bring them all in. But remember that this one is in sync with this one and this one with this one. So if I start changing the first one, this one is going to change along with this one. And if I change this one to, I don't know, something else, this one is going to change along with this one. So now we start getting, you know, different sounds. And it's a bit different than single. But it's the difference. Super different. And again, you can get... 
can get really cool sounds out of this. It's just, and again, it's completely up to you. It depends on what you want to do and your exploration and the sounds that you want. But remember, the single and double will really make a difference right here. Okay, so let's talk about now uh, about cross modulation, which is X mod. I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna go to single. I'm gonna keep it right there at the bottom, and the X mod is gonna be all the way down. So this one works the way the same way as sync, and basically what it does, uh, it's going to use the frequency. Uh, what X mod means is that uh, one frequency, one uh, one oscillator is going to be used to modulate the frequency of the other one. So that's the technical definition. So right now it works the same uh, on here works the same way as sync. We have a master, and everything else is going to be a slave. I have all the oscillators in the same position, and I'm using a unison, and notice how I, if I play something, I get nothing. I just get, you know, a saw. Or actually, it's, uh, you know, not a saw because, you know, we have a little bit of detuning from the other oscillators, but it's, we are not getting anything. We are not getting cross modulation. And it's because the X mod is all the way down. Now, I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm gonna bring this down because it's gonna get really crazy. I'm gonna go there. So I'm gonna press something and go up on the X mod. And notice that we start getting that cross modulation. And as we go up, it's gonna get crazier and crazier and more and more. And at one point, we are gonna get that. So this is what the cross mod does. Is that just a tiny bit is not gonna do anything. Now, on this one, I'm gonna keep it like that. And now I'm gonna bring a square. And notice how the, sh the waveform changes. Of course, what we do on the master one will affect the slave ones just like the sync, right? Because we use the frequency to modulate the other ones. So, of course, okay, okay so I'm gonna go and keep it maybe there. So, if I press something and bring the other ones, we're gonna get more sound, more sound, more, you know, just gonna be get bigger. And as soon as you bring up more oscillators and you even detune them or change the frequency of them, you're just gonna get, you know... You're gonna get more of this. Alright. So that's the cross-modulation. Now, this one works pretty much like the sync, uh, in terms of how we can, you know, modulate it. Because we are doing the frequency the, the, the um, frequency modulation with the oscillator and one is modifying all of this, but we can still use the frequency modulation to, you know, modulate the slave one. So let me just adjust this and put them all right there. So for now, I'm going to do nothing, right? We get pretty much nothing. Notice what happens. I'm doing... Maybe I'm going to go to the triangle. Notice that what we get, and I'm going to... Remove this one, remove this one, and keep the second one. So what is this? So this is pitch, is modulating the pitch, and I'm gonna go and do it slower, so we can see it. It's just modulating the pitch, right? It's just pitch modulation. The thing is that, if we grab, if we start doing the cross modulation, it's gonna get, you know, you're gonna get different timbres. Just gonna sound very different, right? Because you are doing a pitch and you're doing the cross modulation. Now you start bringing the other ones, change the waveforms, and you start getting really complex sounds. Now, of course, I'm, I'm I'm doing I'm going very aggressive, so you can hear the difference. But you know, you can do just a little bit, and it's enough. Let me go faster. All right, so that could be a good, cool sound. There we go. If I turn it off, 
It sounds pretty dull now that we can't, you know, we are coming from the X mod. And if you turn it off, on, it's just adding, you know, that grit. Right. So same thing we did with the sync. We can use the envelope to do a little bit of modulation. So I'm going to go right here and this is going to control the intensity. And maybe I'm going to do something like that. Maybe it's too much. Remember that again, this controls the pitch. Maybe it's a bit too much again. We can do a little bit just to get, you know, a taste. Right. So that's how, you know, the X mod works. Now, on top of this, uh, for now, I'm just going to, you know, put them all at the same position because we are reaching the end. And now you know what everything does and how, how to control it. So you can do X and uh, S and X. So S and X is uh, both at the same time. It's sync and cross modulation, which is, you know, super now. Now, notice that even though we are doing something right here, something right here, and maybe I'm going to do to go, I'm going to go there. Of course, maybe just keep the envelope or maybe just do nothing right now. We are getting that sync sound, right? We are getting it. Now, if I do X mod, cross mod, we are not getting the same again, but it changes the sound. Now here, the thing is that it's gonna really work when we do a little bit of modulation. Right? So at the end of the day, you just need to do a lot of exploration with this because this can get, you know, can get really crazy and, can, you know, give you really crazy sounds. For example, just to give you an example, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep this. You know, let's go to to just to cross modulation and see what happens. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep an MG uh, over here. I'm gonna do something like that. I'm gonna do less. And now I'm gonna go to the la to the on. Maybe I'm gonna latch it. And I'm gonna go to poly. So maybe I can. See how crazy it gets. I'm gonna go faster. And we can even bring some of the envelope. And we can even change this. <laughs> if I turn it off, just normal. Or maybe you can even use the envelope. Or maybe use just a sink. Or maybe just use both. Okay, so I'm gonna go uh, here and I'm just gonna give you the last piece of information. It's gonna keep it pretty much the same. And I'm gonna do that. We are doing poly. Maybe I can do unison. And we get that. We are. I'm doing sync, single, and I'm doing the MG1 to do to do the modulation. Now remember how this worked. I'm gonna turn all this down, and we get nothing. Okay. So remember that you have this one, <laughs> the VCO one and the slave VCO. I told you that we were we were gonna go back to this one. So when we the effect is off, this one controls the pitch of the first one but now if it's on we you know can we get nothing but as soon as we go up we're gonna start modulating which is essentially what this is doing right same thing on cross mod maybe we don't want this right away but we can control it with the mod wheel Oh, maybe I'm gonna do this. 
because we need that and then we do the frequency right so yeah so it's kind of kind of important now we know we know why we get vco and slave vco all right so that's it that's pretty much uh all about this synthesizer of course you have some connections at the back but for that one you can you know check the manual uh, you know you can get that information from there but that's it you know you can get really conventional sounds out of this synthesizer you can get really cool sounds you can get really crazy sounds it's just a fantastic piece of uh just history that's my my conclusion just a great synth now of course if you're doing um Maybe pop, that's fine. But if you do hard EDM or, I don't know, maybe more modern stuff, maybe this is not going to help that much. Maybe that this is not going to be your vibe. This is more of a, you know, synth wave, kind of a retro uh, kind of a vibe. If, you're, if, if you like to do synth wave or, you know, working with synths and get vintage sounds, this is your thing. This is going to, it's going to give you that sound right, right away. It's just very easily it's going to give you that kind of a vintage synth wave retro vibe. Uh, for that one, it's amazing. For more modern stuff, of course, you can still use it, but you know, you can use other things for that with more modulations options and, you know, more modern features. So hopefully you learned something on this one. Now you know how everything works. Remember, of course, to like and subscribe. If you don't like and you don't subscribe, of course, the channel dies. And it's, of course, free. So just go like and subscribe. And remember to check Patreon if you like this and you want to support the channel and you have the money. Uh, check Patreon and you can, uh, you can support this on Patreon. All right, so see you on the next one.